Good morning folks, I'm Dan. Got asked a while back if I would do a video on my powder coat setup. It's uh, nothing spectacular. I run an Eastwood powder coat gun. I've already sandblasted some parts and I've got a few Atlas parts here is what I've got. So um, I went ahead and sandblasted them, mask them off, and I'll kind of explain that a little bit. It's basically just you want to make sure your parts are clean and, and I sandblast them with a with a uh, Harbor Freight cabinet. I've got two Harbor Freight cabinets. One I, One's a bench top that I keep uh, glass beads in for glass beading stuff and the other I keep usually silica sand in for um, sandblasting for powder coating and coating and that type of thing. So um, that works. I'll get into their cabinets a little bit more later on because I'm going to do some upgrades to mine so I'll, I'll show that then. The cabinets work. They're nothing spectacular and they're a good place to start to have a decent sandblast cabinet. So um, anyway, I'll get you down here, show you these parts that I've got cleaned up and we'll go from there. The parts I've got here today are the um, bracket and the back plate that I'm using for my motor switch on the little Atlas 10 inch lathe. And if you haven't seen that series of videos, well, I'll put a link up here, up above here someplace so you can see them. Um, I've got the boring table that goes for the Atlas 10 inch lathe and I've masked off the top surfaces. I lightly sanded them off. We had quite a bit of rust actually. I've, there's the pictures at the beginning so you can, you know what those looked like to start with. So I lightly cleaned those off, went ahead and just duct taped them off with duct tape and went ahead and sandblasted everything so they're nice and clean. This is the boring table itself. The bottom's a uh, machine surface and the top's a machine surface. These are in rough enough shape that they're not really bad by Atlas standards. They've got some, some rust etching and things on them, both top and bottom. Uh, if I had a surface grinder, well, I'd probably surface those off and maybe someday I will. But anyway, for now, they're taped off and this is the um, vise that goes with that boring table. And there again, taped them off and sandblasted everything else. So what I do to mount them up is if they've got threaded holes, well, I'll normally put a bolt. That gives you a little better ground and then I'll uh, just to fix a tie wire to them so I can hang them. And uh, the main thing you want to be concerned about is getting a good ground on them. And I just use tie wire. It's just plain old cheap tie wire. So you just want to tie them off to where you get a, a good ground on them. And let's try this again here. The best way to tie off a bolt if you're going to get a ground on it, especially on a bolt like this, is run one loop around and then twist it off. That'll tend to tighten itself on the wire and you get a good ground that way. So there I can hang it both to powder coat it and to um, hang it in the oven. Stuff like this, no threaded hole. Um, easiest to, to coat them of course on top. There's a little ridge in the bottom but that's hidden. It doesn't really matter. A lot of times just run you a loop through the bottom and there you've got a good way to hang that. There again the bracket I just ran a wire through and hung it. Stuff like that sometimes you have trouble getting a good ground on them especially if you've used your wires a couple of times and they're already got powder built up on them but you can clean that off and there again tie wire is cheap you just hang a new one on there and move forward twist them off. They'll tell you with the powder coat stuff to preheat your oven. Um, that's a good idea and I will start my oven here in a minute. I use my the same oven that I built the Cerakote stuff in. I'll give a quick quick picture of that but a standard toaster oven or a um, regular kitchen oven as long as you're not using it to cook in works real well for that. Um, but if you preheat them while the temperature stabilizes, if you just start your oven from cold, a lot of times they'll run full blast until they get up to your preset temperature. So you'll you're actually overheating the, the the parts real quick. You'll you know if you're going for a 350 degree bake on them when you preheat it, why it'll shoot up to four or five hundred degrees because the elements come on full blast until they get close to the proper set temperature. So go ahead and preheat your oven so that they're pretty close to the temperature you want them when you uh, when you put your parts in. It's not a bad idea to go ahead and hang your parts in the oven and um, bake them for 15 or 20 minutes. It just clears any moisture out of them and, and makes sure they're ready to accept powder a little bit better. 
it's cold here today or it's cool here today still it wouldn't be a bad idea to do that but I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna go ahead I've already got them sandblasted off they're cleaned up and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and powder coat them and then we'll hang them in the oven and bake them okay here's my powder coat setup standard Eastwood dual voltage gun um, and then their their spray setup um, Got a ground wire run off. I run I run an extension wire when I've got it set up this way over to, to my little rack that's got everything hanging on it. Um, one power cord plugs into 110. Uh, this is a dual voltage gun, so high and low. And uh, I normally run this on high. Sometimes if you need low, why you can you can uh, run it on the low setting and get back into crevices a little bit better. But uh, otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. Ground wire goes to your product. You've got a dead man switch to hold down so you don't electrocute yourself there's a little diffuser that goes on the end of there part of the time i'll run that diffuser for the most part i've got to where i don't um so anyway let's go ahead i'll move the camera over so we can see the see the parts hanging and we'll go ahead and spray them down it's pretty simple from here on out uh clean air supply runs up i run probably 10 pounds of pressure whatever however the gun feels like it wants to flow the best with the powder that's in it the bigger casting like this table um, it takes a little bit longer to heat up I'd like to get it in there first so it starts to stabilize a little bit more uh, temperature varies a little bit in the oven and your finish will flow out differently depending on what powder you're using and the how thick the material is um, it tends to take a little bit longer to get flow out on on these bigger castings um, cure time on and it's a TC coatings is the primary powder I use although I've got some Eastwood stuff too this gray that I use on the Atlas is uh, 350 degrees with a 10 minute cure time and what I do is I'll wait until the material starts to flow and once the powder starts to flow then I'll start my 10 minutes and it doesn't seem to be real critical on time wise um, like I say this TC powder with this particular color is 10 minutes at 350 degrees some of the Eastwood stuff is runs 400 degrees for like 15 minutes so it varies between manufacturing it varies between the type of powder that you're using on the even from the same manufacturer so that's pretty simple we just should have a good ground you hit the button and spray your powder we need a little more pressure there edges that aren't going to be outer edges. That's all there is to it. That's ready to go in the oven. Okay, here's just a quick inside view of the oven. Um, we're at uh, 
uh, we've had the door open and closed. It had stabilized about 300 to 352 degrees. And now with me having the door open and closed and now me having it open as I loaded it, why it's dropped off, we're down to 310 degrees. So nothing started to flow out yet. This, uh, the big casting's probably already been in there for about five minutes, five to 10 minutes, and it hasn't brought up enough temperature yet to stabilize. Um, so we'll let that, uh, We'll let it come back up to about 350 and then we'll start watching it. Well, here's our little pieces, powder coated up. You know, it got casting defects and things like that, but that was normal with them. Um, I didn't bother to tape off the bottom. I lightly sandblasted that just when I hit it. I had taped these off, all the, all the surfaces that were not to be powder coated and not to be sandblasted, basically. I went ahead and, and taped them off with duct tape, which was this top surface, this bottom surface, these two edges because this is keyed to go on the table to sit down in the table and we've got a little powder built up on it now so it's tight there but that's fine that'll clean off uh, this front face and the jaws I'll clean these jaws up a little bit more there um, they're in kind of ragged shape and they've been painted before at some point in their life and originally I don't believe they were so I'll go back and I'll finish polishing them up and clean them up a little bit more but then this surface and this surface were were not painted um, when I do those, I went ahead and duct taped them, and then before I put them in the powder coat oven, I peeled that duct tape off of there. I didn't show that, uh, but I did peel that duct tape off before I go ahead and put it in the oven. Another way to do it is uh, heat resistant tape, uh, and I don't remember, it's a silicone based tape, I believe, that's good for 400 or 500 degrees, something like that. Um, I've used it a little bit in the past. I don't do a whole lot to where I really feel it's necessary. If I'm plugging bolt holes, why I'll uh, use silicone plugs, which I do keep a stock of silicone plugs. I've got an assortment of those. that, So I could, in theory, go ahead and plug off the threaded holes and all that so you don't get any powder in them. I find it's just as easy to go back and um, tap out the holes, plus I can still use those holes to, to hang them by. Um, so that's pretty much the way I do it. And that'll hopefully give you a, a little bit of an overview. As I said before, I use TM Coatings paint or powder. Um, this is their 7004 Signal Gray. And I'll normally buy it a couple pounds at a time. Um, I'm getting down. I've got some in the gun and then this little bit less, so I'll order some more. They ship in a plastic bag, which is kind of a pain in the rear. I've gotten where I transfer them over into a mason jar with a ring on it. And as I come up with these, these are just the tops out of a... Uh, well, these were out of eggnog cartons from, from Christmas time. I take and wash those off, cut them up, and let them dry. Just cut our circle out, and it makes a real nice pour spout. You can peel the top off, dump in what you need, and, and they're fairly well sealed. So that's the way I store my powder, they say, to keep them clean and dry. The way it's not a hard process, just it's not really expensive to set up. Um, best way to do it is find an old kitchen oven, and if you've got the space to store it, why well, just dedicate it to your powder coat. But that's all there is to it. Not a difficult process, not hard to do, it's quick and easy. Um, it's pretty clean compared to using a, a spray gun or, a, or bomb cans to, to paint stuff. Still on bigger projects, I've gotten to where I, I will uh, use just spray cans if it's not enough to justify mixing, gun or mixing paint up and putting it in a gun. But for the smaller stuff, I've gotten to where I powder coat it real quick, real easy, and no fuss, no muss. So. Anyway, hopefully that'll give you a few ideas, and, and if you find these videos helpful, why I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button. If you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video, 
And if you like these videos, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section for me below. Thanks for taking the time to watch.